Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,828. Can you imagine driving something that has 18,000 horsepower, thrusters, and 36,000 pounds of thrust? Well, today we're riding with the Bone Shaker. Buckle up. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today I'm in beautiful Ontario, Canada, with a very special guest by the name of Rick Kopp. Rick, welcome to Cars Yeah. Do you have any gear, and are you ready to release the clutch. I am ready to light the afterburner. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, this <laughs> is going to be a crazy ride today, listeners. Now, before I give you a proper introduction, Rick, what's one little thing that most people might not know about you? Uh-oh. Boy, you're setting me up. One thing that people don't... I'm actually kind of on the shy side. Really? Yeah, in front of the camera quite a bit and interviews and stuff, but I am actually a little bit on the reserve side. All right. Well, I know that when um, we originally started this conversation, and I, I, I'm going to bring this up because you, you mentioned you're shy, which I don't believe for one second. Your other name, that other name that people call you. Oh, which is, the other name, which is Ricky Hollywood. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Ricky yes. Holly. Nobody named Ricky Hollywood could be shy in my book. And nobody that drives the kind of vehicle that Rick drives can be shy either. So let me give you a proper introduction and we're going to dive into this crazy world that you live in. Rick Kopp has owned and raced everything from motocross at age eight to drag racing indoor cars. He continues drag racing at the sportsman level in the top dragster and nostalgia nitro funny car classes and has been competing for nearly 30 years. Holy cow. He started driving a jet truck five years ago with Pyro as his first fire-breathing beast, riding with him on every ground, a pounding pass, is a guy named Bone Shaker. It's his buddy, a chrome skeleton known as Scully, which is pretty cool. Powered by an 18,000 horsepower, that's right, 18,000 horsepower jet engine with afterburners and sporting 36,000 pounds of thrust. His truck is something you have to see in action to believe. So we're going to learn a lot more about that. But first, a word from our valued sponsor. So let's give them a little listen. When we come back. Buckle up, baby. We're going for a ride. We'll be right back. Are you heading out on the highway for a road trip this summer? I can't wait to hit the road. Covercraft makes quality protection for the inside of your vehicles while you're traveling. Their plush custom fit mats or Berber mats turn any ride into something special and are easy to remove and clean after days on the road. Covercraft floor mats are the ultimate protection from moisture, dirt, mud, snow, and slush. Just about anything you can throw at them. Don't forget your vehicle's trunk area too. Their Carhartt custom cargo liners not only look great, but they keep your rear cargo areas and seats protected from the sun and those accidental spills. Custom fit truck liners for sedans, coupes, and SUVs are perfect to protect the factory carpet from all those things that can stain and damage the floors. All your options are quality made, easy to clean, secure to the floor, and look oh so good. Check out Covercraft.com for a wide variety of styles, colors, and options for a custom fit. And I've got a special offer for you. If you use the code YAH21, that's Y-E-A-H-2-1, at Covercraft.com, they'll give you 10% off your Covercraft order. That's right, 10% off. Simply use the code YAH21 at checkout. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. I was tired of my rates for my collector car insurance going up every year for no explainable reason. My carrier seemed to be turning into a media company versus an insurance company, and I realized that a portion of my policy premium was paying for all those so-called free media goodies. So I did my homework, I talked to knowledgeable collectors, shopped around, and discovered American Collectors Insurance. They've been serving the collector car hobby since 1976. You last that long by properly serving your customers' insurance need, not with a lot of fluff. ACI is ranked the number one 
online collector car insurance provider, according to Google, Trustpilot, Facebook, and they offer their real person guarantee live support. No never ending phone loops when you need help. Plus, because you don't use your classic car as a daily driver, you could save up to 40% compared to regular auto insurance. American Collectors Insurance provides agreed value policies. So if you experience a total loss to your collector vehicle or it's stolen, you'll be paid the amount listed on your declaration page, less any deductibles, of course. No ifs, ands, or buts. Give them a call today and ask for your free quote at 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866-224-9324. Tell them you're a friend of mine, Mark Greens, at Cars Yeah. American Collectors Insurance, classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. All right, Rick, we're back. So let's dive. I usually say let's dive a little deeper into the corner, but you don't do any corners with this thing. You just go straight down a runway. So let's let's go back first and start with this 30-year career of driving. Kind of walk us through your career a little bit and then bring us up to today with Bone Shaker. You take the wheel. Oh my goodness, how much time do we have? Well, oh you goodness. can you can do the uh cliff note version, okay? <laughs> Yeah, we. Uh, I started really young. My parents got me into motocross, as every kid wants, you know, a go kart and whatever. And a lot of my buddies at the time, they played hockey, they played baseball, and all that. And it just was never for me. My father was a gearhead, and of course, in blood, it just kind of rubs off from one to the other. They got me into motocross, and then we. Um, I started off for the first year just trying to get my feet wet, and then from there, I went competitive for the next eight years. By the time I was 10, I was starting to become competitive, and by the time I was 12, I was pretty much all the way in, into the uh, 80 class series. Most racers start pretty young, which is pretty cool, but then you got into dragsters and going really fast down a straight line. What is it that that drew you into drag racing? My father. My father was a, you know, he was a, he just, he had a couple door cars, uh, a couple Hemi cars, uh, 446 pack cars. And so he would go up to a track up here at Cuga, Ontario. And, um, and I used to go, we used to go up there every weekend whenever we had a time to go up and whatnot. And then I got into it. And then from there, I got my first uh, Camaro. So I started drag, drag racing that. And then I decided I wanted to go faster. So then I got into Super Pro. I would run a 990, 950, somewhere in that zone. Now let's fast forward to what you're driving these days because this is something really crazy, really unique, very different. I've had lots of racers on this show from F1 racers to IndyCar racers, endurance racers, and a lot of drag racers, but you're the first in a massive truck like this. So what drove you, excuse the bad pun, to jump into a, a basically a semi truck that has a jet engine strapped on the back? Who thinks of this kind of stuff? Well, people that maybe I fell out of the crib at a very young age, I don't know. But, you know, it's it, I'm not the first one, but for Bone Shaker for an international, it's the fastest international jet truck in the world. So we decided, um, originally it started out to be Pyro, and it was built in the 80s, and it had a J34 in it. And it was an older girl. So we campaigned that for a few years. And then we decided, well, we're either going to we're going to build something really bad, big and just go for it. So that's what we did. And we created Bone Shaker. We built the frame. We built I purchased the engine and um, put it all together. And this is what we got. If you could describe to our listeners, what is it like to make a pass in this thing because most of us who've never drag raced we don't really know what that's about but we can imagine just all of a sudden just throttle on i mean everything in your body goes to the back of your body and you point this thing straight and you got to keep it on the track and you go as fast as you can but this thing and you think about a jet engine when i think about jet engines you think about planes kind of spooling up and then it takes a while to get going and then finally you're going That's not how this thing works, is it? Well, it does and it doesn't because it's 7,000 pounds. So it takes a lot of thrust to get this thing moving. But after my 60 feet to 100 feet, 
it comes on really strong. So if you could imagine yourself and you're in a commercial jet and you're going down the, the runway and you're waiting and waiting to take off and then finally it just goes. Well, this here within the 60 feet, I'm already, oh, easy, close to 100 miles an hour. So then from there on in, it'll run out at around 225 to 230 and 1,320 feet. Now, the biggest thing is with this is the weight at 7,000 feet, I'm sorry, at 7,000 pounds is getting it stopped. So I have two primary parachutes and two secondary parachutes and, of course, my brakes. So most of the time it stops with two parachutes and, of course, my brakes. Wow. When you think about a, a jet airplane, when it comes to a stop and that that thing happens with the engines. It's like the cowling comes back. It's almost like yes. the engines reverse or something. Yeah. I don't know what they do, but it makes yeah. all this noise and you go, I hope we stop. Uh, does your truck do something like that? Or is it more like a vehicle where you just shut it off and pop the chutes and get the binders on and hope it, that, hope it stops? That's exactly what happens. We don't have any anything else. Our parachutes, of course, are our lifeline. So that's, those have to just deploy. If I don't see them and I have a rear view mirror, if I don't see them come out, I'm already on in my secondary. I got you. Yeah. yeah. Holy cow. How big are these parachutes? They got to be big. Uh, yeah, they're 16 feet wide each. So there's a lot of laundry. That's just, yeah, a lot of laundry. There you go. Yeah. 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 I met your lovely uh, bride to be, Christine. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Before yes. we started here. So does she iron those for you before every show? <laughs> <laughs> well, we put a lot of baby baby powder on baby them powder. to make them soft and fluffy. <laughs> and because each two shoots go in one pod. So they have to be able to deploy really, really nicely. But believe it or not, she, she, uh, has my full confidence to to pack all my shoots. Even even though I'm there, she does all the folding and everything, and we load them together. It's a full team. Yeah, incredible. Very, very cool. Well, I always like to ask my guests about what I call a driving inspiration. Somebody who was a key mentor in your life, an inspiration, somebody who was very influential to help you in this career that you've chosen. Who was that person, and what do they mean to you? Uh, first and foremost, by far, is my father. Without my father, I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be involved in what I passionately love. And uh, unfortunately, I lost him three years ago, but I know he's with me all the time. And one of my big uh, uh, fan favorites is John Force. I just love the way John Force conducts himself and brings the camera to himself. And I had a great opportunity a few years ago to spend three days with him because we had him up here in St. Thomas. So we brought his whole, we didn't bring the car up. We brought, he brought up his hauler with some of his old cars and we hired him for the three days. So we spent some time together and he's a really, really down to earth guy. Yeah, John Force. I mean, he's a force to reckon with. Another bad pun there, but he's he's pretty incredible. And and uh, my condolences. I lost my father about four years ago, just this time too. So I know uh, the kind of impact that makes on us uh, fathers. My dad got me in the car. So what a legacy that he's left uh, the world with is you and Bone Crush and all the fun stuff that you're doing. If you were going to advise somebody young or old to get into the sport of drag racing, what are some of the ways that you would inspire them to do that or advise them to do that? Well, I, you know, I mean, first off, stay in school. I mean, if you're, if you're in a trade school and they've got automotive, jump into all the classes. That's machine shop. That's small engines. That's automotive. That's body work. Try to learn every facet that you can in that. And once you have that, and if you enjoy that, then you take it to the next level. So when you do purchase your first car or second car, you may want to dabble with it a little bit. And on the Friday night, up to your local racetrack, go up there and see what it's all about. And never be nervous. They have a lot of street nights. Don't race on the street. That's just not the cool thing to do. Take it up. Every racetrack has street night. If it's on a Monday or a Wednesday or a Friday night, go up there and don't be shy. Because you know what? We all started there. There was a first time for me ever to run down a drag strip, and I wasn't fast, and I wasn't a John Force or anything of that nature, but that's where you start off. 
think that's absolutely true. And I, I like the words, don't race on the streets. Bad, bad idea. We have so many catastrophes. I had a, a guest all lined up here, a guy by the name of Dano, who was going to be a guest last year and sadly was killed on Christmas Day because of street racers who both lost control and hit him. And so, yeah, keep it at the track. And there's so many great tracks and places to go. We have Pacific Raceway here where you can go in the evenings and race, and it's so fun. I also encourage people, go to a drag race, a professional drag race, because what I found, at least here in the North, West is unique. You can get pretty up close and personal with all the drivers and their teams, and you can stand right there and watch them tear an engine down, put it back together. There's always time for them to step forward and talk to you and give you a little bit of advice. But yeah, get out there and give it a give it a try and see if it's something for you and go from there. Uh, it's an incredible experience to go to a drag race. For people out there that think maybe drag racing isn't for them, go to a drag race. Just Go and see what it's like. I guarantee you it will take your breath away. And then they have people like you there that do these specialty runs and drag races that are just like, oh my gosh, what is that thing uh, that make it so much fun? Take a kid to the drag races. It's something he'll never forget. My dad used to take me to Orange County drag races. And I'll never forget a race that we went to before Orange County was Orange County. It was all orange trees and there wasn't Irvine or city there, but I remember after the drag races, a guy named Evil Knievel came out and jumped over. Oh, a bunch yes. Of, jumped over a bunch of school buses. And uh, wow. I think I was seven years old or six at the time. My mom even made me an Evil Knievel cape, which was pretty darn cool. I tried to jump cool. in some trash cans. I didn't do so well. Kind of did a Caesar's Palace type thing <laughs> with, with that adventure. We're going to take a short break, Rick. And I'm going to come back. I, I like to ask my guests about a big challenge they faced. Some kind of obstacle they've had to overcome. So keep the seatbelts on. We'll be right back with Rick Cop and Bone Shaker. So keep seated. We'll be right back. What began as a charitable car show has grown into the world's greatest collector car auctions, raising over $133 million for charitable organizations to date. For nearly 50 years, automotive enthusiasts from all over the world have enjoyed the Barrett-Jackson Collector Car Auctions. And I'm a huge fan. Regarded as the barometer of the collector car industry, their auctions are world-class lifestyle events where thousands of the world's most sought-after unique and valuable automobiles cross the block in front of a global audience, in person, on TV, or streamed online. Barrett-Jackson produces the world's greatest collector car auctions in Scottsdale, Arizona, Palm Beach, Florida, Las Vegas, Nevada, and new for 2021, Houston, Texas. The excitement of Barrett-Jackson auctions is contagious and a unique experience is not to be missed. And coming soon, something new for you Cars Yeah listeners. I'll be teaming up with Craig Jackson on the first ever Barrett-Jackson podcast coming to your mobile devices every week. Listen here on Cars Yeah and check out the Barrett-Jackson website for unique details on this new exciting podcast that I'm very proud to be a part of. And be sure to visit BarrettJackson.com today. Barrett Jackson, the world's greatest collector car auctions. I've discovered Linkage. It's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market, driving, restoring, collecting, and discovering your passion for motor vehicles. Linkage is about experiences, opinions, and values. Linkage is an actual, informed, reasoned opinion based on first-hand experiences. A talented Linkage team covers the automotive world, the people who share your passion and mine, smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions, ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey. Linkage, geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at LinkageMag.com. So, Rick, I always ask my guests about a big obstacle, big challenge, even a massive failure that they face. And the reason for this is not so much the situation, although I want you to kind of get deep into it. It's how that situation taught you a really valuable lesson so that you can move forward in a positive way. So take us on a, a challenging run. Holy moly's. Uh, okay. Challenging run. Okay. Uh, for, for myself, I think one of the biggest lessons that I've learned was, uh, my goodness, uh, just being good to people 
all the way through. The, the one reason why I went into a, a jet truck and whatever, A, it was different, but B, it was it's the entertainment business and I love people. So, you know, all the people, everybody gets hero cards signed. Everybody gets tattoos, fake ones that go on. And I love everybody. So it, it's, it's just a lot of fun that way, but I don't think I'm asking, ask, I'm answering your question the way I really should be. I'm trying to think of, gosh, there's been so much in my life that, you know, there's been roadblocks and somehow or another, I just pick up, from where I left off, I'm just, and I just get over the hurdles and just make it happen. Many years ago, I had, when I had my top dragster, I was sponsored by Home Depot, Stanley Tools and Husky Tools. And I had that for almost seven years. It was a really good ride. But once that was over, it was like, what do I do now? You know, because you've got so much money invested in everything. And to continue on, you need money. And so I went out door knocking and uh, to, you know, local body shops and machine shops and anybody that I could possibly get money to, um, to, to, to fulfill my passion and continue on racing. So uh, I was fortunate a couple of times that I met a few people that were really into drag racing and they said, yeah, you know, we're going to go in for the ride. And we had some, we had a lot of fun. I've heard this from a lot of racers money is the big equalizer and the big problem for every racer. And it's gotten more and more expensive in all sorts of racing. I just had Tom Christensen, who's known as Mr. Lamar. He's won eight Lamar races, raced there 18 times, actually nine, raced there 18 times. And he talks about it's just gotten so expensive. So when you think about drag racing and what you do, what are some of the ways you that it's changed? Because in the old days, you'd dial for dollars, as you'd say, hey, sponsor me, I'll put my sticker on your car, and it'll be great. And now that's a whole different world. It's more, what can you do for me as a sponsor? You need to be my spokesman. And you mentioned it earlier when we started this question. I've got to be nice to people. I've got to be approachable. People need to be able to get to me because otherwise, if I'm not, if I'm kind of a jerk, they're going to see that sponsor logo and go, huh. I'm not going to buy those tools. So when you think about raising money to go racing and sponsorships, this is a great challenge question is how do you go about that? What are things that you offer to sponsors that make them go, oh, maybe this is a good idea for me to put some of my marketing dollars in this guy's hands versus in an ad in a magazine or online or whatever it might be? Well, first and foremost, once you get a sponsorship partnership, uh, if you will, it is a marriage for however long that may be. Might be a year, might be two years, three years. We don't know, but that's what it is. And every day that you wake up, it's a job that you need to make sure that everything goes as planned. So what you need to do is at the track is only a small portion of really what happens. You meet people face to face, but business really starts on Monday morning. So let me just give you a, a quick overview. When I had the Home Depot Husky Tools deal, what I had to do is on weekends and some weeknights, I had to go to different Home Depot stores, bring the truck trailer, hero cards, my crew, well, part of my crew, unload everything to set up a display. So when people were coming in, it, there was a point of purchase sale right there. And we would be there with the race car and everything to help sell, sign hero cards, sign their toolboxes, sign whatever they purchase. And it went a long way. And so when I mean we would do 25 to 30 of those a year, that's what we would do. There was times where we would have to head out Friday or we had to be at the racetrack for Saturday morning. We would work at the Home Depot store, store till close, say 10 o'clock load everything up, get on the highway, drive all night long to get to the racetrack for Saturday morning. So let's do a little marketing right now. Sure. Do you have some sponsors this year? Um, right now we're looking for some partnerships. Boy, there's there's all kinds of different areas. There's so many areas that people could use this truck for uh, to show. I mean, if it was an air ride system going on it or if it's uh, – uh, Mike's Red Hot Sauce, you know, if there's a new company out there that wants a hot sauce because this burns 1,800 degrees. So, I mean, it's unbelievably hot. 
There's so many things that this thing can do. And everybody can relate to a jet truck. Everybody just is fascinated by them. So we know what we're doing. If anybody ever wanted to come on board or take a look at it, please reach out to us. Well, I think it's cool, especially the way you related that, because I would never have thought, if I have a hot sauce company, what am I going to be doing at the racetrack? Well, people eat. They they eat a racetrack. You're a hot truck. The truck. I get it. So that's kind of cool how the whole thing comes together. So if somebody wanted to reach out to you and see how you could help them in a partnership and promote their products or services, um, I'll put a link on the show notes page here on the Car Show website. They can go to your website, which is yes, please, BoneShakerJetTruck.com. That's pretty easy to figure out. So I would encourage anybody out there who's looking for a way to promote themselves. This is a really unique way to do that. So definitely give them a call, uh, a shout out, and maybe they can do something for you as well. I want to ask you about a really special vehicle in your life. Now, obviously, this truck is a very special vehicle in your life. But if you look at your whole life, has there been one vehicle? Maybe this is a street car or maybe it's a past race car. We'll put Bone Shaker aside because that's obviously the most important right now. But is there one vehicle that really stands out? Maybe your first race car, maybe it's your first go-kart and maybe share a memory or two you have about that vehicle. Oh my goodness. There's so many special ones. I've, I've, I've had five Corvettes in my lifetime, five. Now, nothing, no split windows or anything like that, but I am a Corvette fanatic. I love Corvettes. I don't, they're just something great about them. I love them. And the new Corvette obviously is just on over the top. Um, but I would say, I have to say my first Corvette, which was 1975. It was Canary Yellow. Black interior, four speed. And I just love that car. That was just a fabulous car. The new Corvette is, to me, a groundbreaking transition in the long line of Corvettes. And there have been several. Yes. But this one goes to a whole nother place. In my mind, it's, and I've said this, maybe some people don't like it, but it's the Ferrari of Corvettes in my mind, because it looks like a Ferrari. It acts like a Ferrari. Uh, does it, albeit at a fraction of the cost, which is pretty cool. So there's a great value there. But it, you know, I even, I've had some Corvette salespeople on here that just, they can't even keep them on their lots because these things no. are so popular. Do you think one of those new cars is maybe in your future? I would certainly hope so. Maybe one day. That's all I can say is maybe. <laughs> um, but I would love to have a new vet. They, hands down, they're just awesome hot rods. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty darn cool. So I'm going to crawl into your head here a little bit, Rick. Uh, if you woke up tomorrow and you were manifest as some kind of a vehicle, now this isn't what you want to be. This is your personal attributes, how you, who you see in the mirror, manifest as an actual vehicle. What would that be? But more importantly in this question is the question, why? Holy moly. These are great questions. I have to tell you. Um, oh, shoot. I'd have to say I would be a Corvette. And, <laughs> I would and why be. Is that? Why is that? It's just because they're sleek. They're cool. They're sexy. They're just, they've got everything. They just hand it off. They're just they're awesome. They're great. Well, you know, I think this is appropriate in your case because you're a bit of a showman, really. I mean, that's who you are. You know, you're, you're, uh, I put you at a celebrity status. You go out there, you excite people, you turn them on, you get them excited, especially young kids that see something they've never seen, they could never imagine. We all look at these big semis going down the roads as just moving chicanes. You know, get out of my way. I got to get around you. Please don't crush me. And then to see one that does, I mean, I can imagine that Indian adults too, they come back from the track after seeing you run and just go, well, what on earth? That was the craziest thing I ever saw. So the Corvette is kind of fitting to me because the Corvette has performance. It, it's, it's showy, but I wouldn't say over the top showy. I don't think Corvettes have really ever been that way. I can't really call them a hypercar supercar. They're not the showies of Ferrari, Lamborghini or anything like that, uh, but they're American, American made, uh, American is apple pie. Everybody loves a Corvette. I mean, they've just been around forever. So I, I'll let you get away with that one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. There you go. So I always ask my guests, what are some of the ways that you like to give back and help others in the automotive sectors? Is there some ways that you do that uh, for people out there that 
Uh, could be ways that you donate your time, ways that you help d- individuals get into this sport. What do you like to do to help others? Yes. Um, well, years ago when I had my top dragster, we did a lot of work for Habitat for Humanity. So my crew uh, would come out and we would help on certain builds when we had time, of course. Uh, we would take it to the uh, Habitat for Humanity Reuse Center and we would set everything up. And when people were coming in to buy a sink or a faucet or whatever else they have, everything was set up there. So we supported them that way. And the other thing that we have here is a hospital for sick kids. So on several occasions, we took everything downtown to downtown Toronto and brought everything in and set everything up. And the kids that could come out could and would. And other ones that couldn't, we could see them through the window. And they had something really cool at that time, too. They had a room, it was a library, and you would sit there and you would pick a book, whatever book that may be, and you'd read the book, and it was first thing in the morning. So it was streamed throughout the whole hospital, so all the kids could see you because a lot of them were cancer patients or whatever the case may be, so we couldn't interact with each other, but at least we could talk to them and vice versa. So it was a really, really heartfelt thing, and we just love to do that. That's awesome. You know, anything to do with helping kids, especially kids that are ill and sick, is is so special. And again, even at the track or in that situation, I'm so happy you do that because those are memories that they'll always remember. But you did a great segue for me here, Rick, because you mentioned a library. And I always ask my guests to share a great book that they've read or they've enjoyed. Is is there a book maybe during the COVID situation here uh, that you've enjoyed that you could share with our listeners? You know, oh boy. Uh, oh my goodness. Mm. No, I don't. I don't have a good book. Everything I read is everything is online and it's all automotive or NHRA or IHRA or jet stuff or whatever. So not really a book. Well, let me ask you this. Is there uh, maybe a website or two that you go to on a regular basis that's related to racing that we could put on your show notes page to share with our listeners that they could go to and enjoy as well? Are there just maybe one or two websites that you find yourself on quite often? Uh, yeah, so uh, Competition Plus is one that I go on quite often. NHRA.com I go on. So IHRA. So that brings in all the the racers that are, you know, running different door cars and whatnot. So and of course, right up to the top fuel cars. So that that's pretty much what, uh, yeah, I go on to. So we're going to take one more short break. When we come back, we're going to go on what I call the ultimate drive, which is quite fun. So get ready for that one. Sit tight, listeners. Enjoy this sponsor, and we'll be right back. How did you discover your path to a fulfilling life? Too many young people flounder in finding an education and a career that fits. But for those who have a passion for cars, trucks, and motorcycles, and who love working with their hands, problem solving, and fixing things, a career as a professional auto technician is incredibly rewarding. Cars yeah is pleased to team up with Tech Force Foundation, our charity of choice, in bringing scholarships, technical education, and hands-on experience to young people so they can discover a possible future. Join me and lend your support by visiting techforce.org today. All right, so I like to take all my guests on what I call the ultimate drive. And here's the deal. You get to pick the vehicle you're in. You get to pick somebody to ride with. Some people have actually chose a few people to ride with, and that's okay because it's your ultimate drive. Uh, But more importantly, what is that vehicle? Who's driving? Is it you or your guests? And maybe uh, what are you going to be talking about? So what does your ultimate drive look like? Well, we're going back to Corvettes again. (laughs) If I could just get a brand new Corvette, myself and my fiance, I would just love to get in it it and just drive right to the sunset. (laughs) Anywhere, anywhere, go with her and just have a lot of fun. What? It sounds like fun now with Christine sounds even better. So let's think about this a little bit, Rick, because there's so many great drives in the the world and you've traveled a lot, I'm sure, but let's think about... Let's first narrow it down to a continent. Would you be in North America? Would you like to go over to Europe, uh, South America, Asia? Let's narrow it down a little bit to the right place to be driving. I think I'd like to do uh, Route 66. 
Oh, travel. That's, I think, what I'd like to do. I'd like to just take our time and just stop off at everything. Everything that has been shut down and boarded up and just stand there. I love that kind of stuff. I don't like it shut down, but I do really like to just try to take in some of the memories that used to be. Well, that's an awesome drive. And in a new Corvette, that's appropriate. That would be pretty darn cool and uh, lots of photo opportunities. And that'd be a nice way to spend. Well, you could probably spend weeks and weeks doing that if you took your time. Of course, you're going to be in a Corvette, so you're probably going to be going a little fast, but that's okay. <laughs> Try to be careful out there. But I think that sounds like a really, really nice drive. Absolutely. You know, you have taken me on a nice ride today, and I've really had fun getting to know you better. I want to do a shout out to a mutual friend, uh, past guest, Louis Lee. My brother yes. from another mother, uh, he has introduced me to some wonderful people. So, Lewis, thank you for your support and for introducing me to another uh, spectacular, inspiring automotive enthusiast. Before I let you go, Rick, could you leave us with one, maybe uh, a quote, a success quote, a mantra, or some words of wisdom or advice before uh, we let you run back to the racetrack today? Just be true to yourself. Be true to everybody. Be true to yourself. Don't get caught up in everybody else's hype and all that just stay in your own lane that's a perfect way to say it run your own race and you know what you may not win every time but you're gonna win some so just prepare yourself and just stay true to yourself you know that's great advice i appreciate that what are some of the many ways people can follow along with you and learn more about your racing where you're going to be and uh maybe all the social media sites that you play in yeah, you know, uh, I would just say go to Bone Shaker Jet Truck, uh, follow us on Facebook on Bone Shaker Jet Truck, on Instagram. Uh, you can reach out to us on our website. We're on different podcasts from time to time here and there, and of course yourself. So yeah, that would be perfect. Awesome. Uh, listeners, I'll make sure I put links to all of these on Rick Shono's page so you can find him. Follow along with him. And if you're lucky enough to be at one of the races he's going to be at, you got to go and check it out. Take some pictures, send them back to me on Facebook, share that with me because uh, it's got to be an absolutely incredible experience. You know, I didn't ask you this, but what does the rest of the year look like for you? Do you have some events planned that you're going to be racing at? Yes, we've got a few events planned planned already we've got uh down in at we've got atco in new jersey we've got muncie oh my goodness there's quite a few there's muncie there's quaker city there's maryland uh just to name a few we're waiting on to find out if they want us back to mexico this year unfortunately we didn't make it last year because of the covid but we were there the year before now that was incredible so we're looking into that and we're looking at uh, about several other tracks right now so we're just waiting for them to answer us the other um one that we might be doing is uh it's a new series it's called funny car chaos i don't know if you've heard of it or not sounds cool it is amazing amazing program that these guys have put together i mean this is real time old school 65 75 Old school uh, nitro funny cars, alcohol funny cars, uh, bring what you run if they're blowing or not or injected or whatever the case may be. And uh, we might be doing one of their shows this year and hopefully many more for next year. So check them out. They're amazing. Absolutely. I'll make sure to put links again on Rick Shono's page. And I would assume on your website, you also show where you're going to be appearing so people can go there and check that out. Yes, sir. Yeah, they're going to be updated. I imagine it'll be updated next week or at uh, most, and we'll have all our dates, and then other ones will just be, be saying uh, available or it's coming. Awesome. Because, uh, again, with the COVID, everything has kind of been mixed up this year, as we all know. So everybody's kind of been moving their dates and whatever. So I j they're just not – they're there, but they're just not locked and loaded yet. There you go. Well, again, listeners, you got to go check out a drag race or two or three. Uh, you can find Rick Shono's page and find links to everything so you can find out where he's going to be running and go experience Bone Shaker, which is absolutely incredible. Rick, thanks for being so generous today with your time and your expertise. Uh, thanks, Christine, for getting us all connected here. She's your IT expert. Uh, definitely a good teammate you have there. So thank you, Christine. Uh, until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road at a drag race.
Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.